Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and I got some super exciting news for you guys today, which is internet is now working on Windows on ARM on Raspberry. And I'm gonna be showing you guys how to install. Basically, this will be an updated install guide to installing Windows 10 on our Raspberry Pis. So let's get started. <laughs> I remember to almost to the day a year ago 2018 it was just a possibility that we were able to install windows 10 on arm on our raspberry pis through a tweet from nt authorities which a year now you know two days ago basically we now got internet working which is so impressive i'm telling you the progress of how it went it's it's insane one of the latest change that happened two days ago was brand new usb drivers the usb drivers was what was limiting us from doing anything. We couldn't install ethernet, we couldn't do tethering, we couldn't do anything. And halfway through using the operating system, the you would blue screen, the mouse would drop, you couldn't sustain it. So basically it was pretty useless having Windows 10 on Raspberry Pi other than a proof of concept. But now with updated USB drivers made from MCCI, which I'll leave a link in the description below for them, we now have actual usable drivers. And along with that, a month ago or in December, Microchip also created Ethernet drivers for our Broadcom Raspberry Pi Ethernet devices. So not only do we have Ethernet drivers like two months ago, which wouldn't work with the drivers, but now we have the USB drivers to support that. Now there's a lot of credit to go around because there's so many people that were in this project. And I'll just leave a link to the thread that's actually everybody talks in. And you'll see who, basically whoever's talking in there as far as giving input like you know, the main guy, Andre, uh, Driver1998, a, a bunch of people there. You're going to see basically all the credit goes to them. Now, as far as the installation process goes, uh, I will be using WORproject.ml. I'll leave a link in the description below. And it's the same as my previous videos. Uh, just download the latest version, which is 1.0. And he finally fixed the progress bar, which is amazing. Um, going through that, we're also going to need to download the latest drivers, which again, I'll leave a link in the description below, and it should be the February 12th, 2019 drivers. Now also head over to, again, the GitHub in the link below that will give you the latest drivers, which the latest BIOS or UEFI drivers, which will be January's version 2019. And I know you guys had a lot of problems with it, which isn't really a huge problem. You just got to change the boot order, but I'll show you guys that in a second. Once you're done with downloading that, I also have a link in the description below for LAN drivers. We have both Raspberry Pi 3B Plus and Raspberry Pi 3B. Uh, the 3B Plus is the 7800 and the 3B and below would be the 9500, I believe. So download the drivers that you need for your version. I ended up downloading just a zip file, so that's all we need. Now moving forward, going through the install process, we're gonna go through welcome, select your language, Select the SD card that you're gonna put it in. I chose a 32 gigabyte just because I could now use the extra space for more testing. I uh, select the image, which you can get through the links in this menu. And I'm using um, 1804, that's the version I'm on. Select the drivers, which is the new, the drivers that we just downloaded, the February 12th ones. The UEFI firmware, we're using January one, so select that. And as far as configuration, I'm using MBR as boot and WMLib as the, I forgot what that's called, but that, that's what I'm using. And then hit next. It takes about 20 minutes, 30 minutes, depending on your SD card speed, but that's pretty quick. And the progress bar, like I said, works. So I'm very impressed. Before I used to just lock up at like 30 and then it'll be finished when it's finished. Once that's done, pop in the SD card into your Raspberry Pi and we have to configure the UEFI. Now, in the UEFI settings, first go to Pi configurations and make sure that you change um, to the Arson SD. Now we need this just for the setup process. It's a slower SD card driver, but the setup process requires it. And then we'll switch over to the Broadcom uh, SD card drivers later. And remember to set the clock speed to max. Once you're done with this, reboot it and go right back into UEFI because we're gonna have to make our boot order to make sure that Arson SD will be primary on the boot, first boot. And that's where you guys were running into the issue because it was booting into the UEFI menu and not to the Arsene. So there we have it. Moving forward with the new drivers that are pre-installed, you could just leave your mouse on there. The, the USB, anything you could just leave on. It's not going to crash. It's not going to blue screen. It'll just work. So I'm going to let it boot. 
and you go through the entire process of just putting your name in, et cetera, et cetera, select, selecting the settings and stuff. Once you're done with that, it's going to boot you into the desktop of Windows 10. So in here, before we do anything, I'm going to reboot the machine back into the UEFI. So start menu, reboot, go back into UEFI, and then we're going to switch it from Arsen back to Broadcom. And then again, change the boot order so Broadcom would be primary. You're going to notice a substantial speed increase because the SD card drivers for this is much faster than the Arsen version. So once you're done with that, boot it back into Windows 10 and you're basically done with the basic install of Windows. Um, to get the network drivers in, basically sneak your network over to your Raspberry Pi and copy the Ethernet drivers over to somewhere on the desktop. Now go down the folders and find the drivers and I think the latest version is 650. So use that and then right click on the INF file and hit install. Give it a couple of minutes and it's automatically going to detect it and install your Broadcom drivers or whatever driver you chose and voila, it's, it's done. Internet should be up and running, no blue screens, it, it just works. Now you're not going to notice any LED lights on your network card or whatever you're looking at it externally. You're not going to see any lights. I don't know why, it's just not working. In this case, other than that, the internet is working and you can check that either through command prompt using IP config or go to your task manager and just hit network and see your IP address. If the IP address is anything close to what your internal network is, like 192.168, then yeah, it's working. Now. While I had this up, I was able to test uh, in Microsoft Edge and it seemed to be okay. As far as internet browsing for the Raspberry Pi, it's not great. I mean, there's so much possibilities now that the internet's working, the USB drivers are stable. There's so much more we can do now. Internet browsing, probably not one of them. Because I felt that there was a huge lack of speed, I decided to basically reduce everything, the shadows, uh, the background. I took everything out, transparency, just to reduce the how much processing you power you need for the background, rebooted the system, and tried again. And this time, I actually managed to install Chrome, a 32-bit version of Chrome, which you can still get. It's called a Chrome Enterprise or something like that. And the 32-bit version is in there, and I installed it and it works. I was able to get to YouTube, but the videos don't play as smooth as I wanted to. That's probably because there's no hardware emulation. So, I mean, afterwards I was able to get to my network share and try to play a video file from there. And it seemed still, again, a little glitchy, a little slow, but hey, we're, we're getting there. We are definitely getting there. And this has been a lot of fun. And now instead of the Raspberry Pi being just a paperweight because there was not much you can do in Windows 10. It's turned into, we could test a lot of stuff. The next thing I kind of want to test since the USB drivers are working is to actually install Windows 10 onto the USB, maybe a SSD or something, and see if that will run because that will make it so much faster. Giving SSD as a swap, yeah, I think it's gonna do good. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, please hit that like button. If you guys have any questions about this, uh, check that thread because a lot of questions are already answered. If not, if it's something simple, just leave it in the comments below and I'll try to answer it. This uh, other stuff that you guys want me to test on it, um, hit up in the comments below. Does it work for Raspberry Pi 2? That's one of the common questions. I am not sure. I don't think so. I'm, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty sure it doesn't work for Raspberry Pi 2, but you guys could give it a go. Anyway, if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as I say in my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.